like to welcome you to our Ross um, High School open house and our tour. So uh, I always start off by asking everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. So would you please stand? You have the pledge right over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. share information about the bond levy, um, answer any questions that you have, um, and then also have a tour of the facility. I'm going to, I see some a lot of familiar faces here in the audience, so um, I know that many of you have been at some of our other tours, so I will kind of go quickly through the fact sheet because my guess is that you really want to get to the tour portion of our program today. Um, before we begin, I'd like to introduce some other people who are going to be assisting me, though. Um, Don Jacobs, if you would stand, or raise your hand there. He's our maintenance staff member, and he serves on our lighting committee. Um, also, Scott Fox, who's our custodial foreman here at Ross High School. And he's going to be helping with the tours as well. Um, Chris Whitmer, he's a custodian here at Ross High School, too. And then Sean Heinlein, who's a social studies teacher, a community member, but also a parent, and he's going to talk as well this evening. Um, lastly, I'd like to recognize Gracie Lloyd. She's our principal here, and I'd like to thank her and her staff, and also two of our students, um, for assisting with the organizing the meeting tonight. So all of you have had the same handouts. Um, you probably uh, have tons of these handouts. But you should have a fact sheet with you, you which was also part of our first mailer. Um, you should have a booklet that was used last year during our coffee discussions, and then a list of all of our committee members for our levy committee. And um, I always say this every meeting, but I'd like to extend my appreciation to the group of uh, committee members who are just extremely committed to getting this levy passed, but most importantly, they're very committed to making sure that our community has good factual information so that when they go to the polls, they are making an informed decision about this levy. Um, there are hundreds of other people, though, who have been helping throughout this entire campaign. The list is too large to even to start listing at this moment in time, but we want to thank everyone who has been part of that process. Um, before we go ahead with the um, discuss the master facilities plan and the other bonds levy information, I'd like to go ahead and review the community engagement process that we used to get us to this point. Um, so in spring of 2015, we did ask our staff to complete a survey, and we asked our staff to complete a survey about how those buildings were impacting teaching and learning. And we also had several focus groups. We're also held with uh, many staff members. And we had nine out of 10 teachers report that the problems being generated by our buildings were extremely important and we needed to get these addressed. And they wanted them addressed as soon as possible. They said it was well overdue, well over time. So what were the most pertinent issues that the teachers discussed in the survey and in the focus groups? First item they indicated was there was a lack of access to technology due to the inadequate electrical capacity and bandwidth within our buildings, safety and security concerns, temperature extremes in classrooms, moisture problems, poor ventilation, lighting and noise concerns, and inadequate classroom space to accommodate 21st century education. So we hear a lot about this 21st century education. What is it? Well, I can tell you it's a lot different than what it was when I went to school. It is about preparing our students to be college, career, and military ready upon graduation. It is about preparing our students to be effective thinkers, problem solvers, communicators, self-directed individuals, effective contributors, and involved community members. It is about preparing our students and making sure that they're successful in life. 
So what I want to kind of just share with you to give you a little bit more of an illustration about 21st education, I'd like to just go ahead and show you this very short two-minute video. It's even that. It was one building. 
we recognize that this plan is huge. And so, is every single aspect of this master facilities plan going to make you 100% want to get on board? My guess is no, because it's a big plan. However, I can share with you that the plan, every component of that plan, was based on a majority consensus of the, or a majority of the community. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the fact sheet. And I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because, again, I see a lot of my familiar faces that have joined me at many, many meetings, and I appreciate your interest and your enthusiasm. But on that front page of the fact sheet, I'm going to pull that out, um, what came out of last year's conversations? Well, one first very, 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 very strong comment that came out was that the Fremont City School community is a proud community, values kids, and they value the education of our children. And time and time again, people said, our children deserve a quality education with 21st century learning facilities. People also agree that this is a turning point for our community. There's lots of revitalization, there's lots of energy in our community, and they are recognizing that Fremont City Schools needs to be a strong school district because that strong school district is going to help revitalize and make our community even stronger. The third bullet point, which is very significant and very important, the Ohio School Facilities Commission um, will receive and give us $54.3 million to help pay for the total cost of the project. This is huge. So we are going to get five new elementary schools, one new high school, and have almost half of it paid for by the Ohio School Facilities Commission. So this is an outstanding value. Um, people have asked me what will happen if the district does not use those dollars or if the district does not pass that bond levy. And I am always very confident to say we are making a good case for our children and for the needs of our children that we will pass this bond levy. But if it isn't passed, those dollars are taken from Fremont because right now the um, OSFC has secured those dollars for Fremont City Schools. However, if we don't pass the bond levy, those dollars are released and given back to the state for other school districts to utilize. So those dollars are not there forever and ever and ever for Fremont to use. And then the other bullet point I think which is very critical is just simply that our school district has been fiscally responsible. We have not come back and asked our uh, taxpayers for extra operating dollars in this district, even though it was needed. In 2008, we were released from fiscal caution, and that was not uh, due to getting extra operating dollars. That was simply because we said we need to start living within our means because we need to do what is right by our community and we have not asked for additional operating dollars even though we've had less state aid come to our district we've had lots of cuts come to our district but we've said we are only going to ask our taxpayers for dollars when we most certainly need them in 2008 we did need them we came to you as a community and asked you to pass that exceptional needs program grant that we received to ask to pass that bond levy for a new middle school. That was the worst building in the school district at that time. Again, we said you're not going to ask for operating dollars, and nothing, nothing, just that bond levy, and that is what we did. And we appreciate the generosity from the community, but now it's time to address these other buildings because just like that building at the middle school, the old middle school. We are having issues here at Ross and issues with our elementary buildings. So all those conversations were um, given in the analysis of all those uh, conversation outcomes were given to our board and they went ahead and passed the final resolution to place the bond levy on the ballot. So inside, let's just go through. And actually, I'm just going to kind of ask you, but I'm going to kind of jump a little bit all over the place here if you have any questions. Um, again, because I'm looking at my community members who they've been here, they've been with me before. 
So I'm not going to bore them. They're probably just here for the tour and wanting me to be fun anyway. So I will just ask any of you, do you have any questions when we go through these items? Um, I think number two is critical. Number two is critical because I don't think we can argue, we're not arguing why these, uh, the condition of these buildings are so bad. Um, we've maintained these buildings. Um, you're going to see that throughout the building. When you came in here, people said, wow, it's so nice and bright. And I said, it's amazing what you can do with a coat of paint. And that's all we did in here. We painted and we put some new carpeting in here. So we have been keeping up and you're going to see some other places as you go through the buildings where we have been maintaining our buildings, or have been maintaining. Um, we put some money into our heating system in here. Um, if we did not do that this past summer, we would not have heat here at Ross High School this summer, or this winter. Uh, that's kind of a problem, so we needed to invest in the heating system here. Um, we've done that with other, our other school buildings as well. Um, so the buildings have been maintained, however, we have major problems still with some of the building foundations, electrical, plumbing, heating, and roofing systems. Um, most importantly to know is that we can no longer put any additional technology here in this building. Um, right now we have devices for students, probably a, a computer, uh, some type of technology device for our students, probably one device for every four kids. Um, it is the year 2017, I should have one device for every student here. Gracie, how many kids do you have here? Um, nearly 1,200. We should have 1,200 devices for our students, and we do not. And the reason for that is not because I don't have the budget to provide the, uh, the hardware, it's just simply because if I provide the hardware, it won't work. Or maybe it will work, but the classroom next door it won't work. Or maybe Mr. Heinlein's smart board will go out and the classroom next door powers up their uh, notebooks. So we just cannot provide any additional technology here. Um, and that is critical. Um, also, we cannot um, house all of our elementary students in our current buildings. And we do have 14 portables that are being used as classrooms. You know, are all here probably today just to look at the high school, but I have to talk about my elementary buildings as well. Um, so that's number two. People have asked about renovating, although that seemed to be a question a year ago. I have not been asked that question in the past six months. Um, the renovating costs were uh, more than building new. So, questions? Sir. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this uh, building program, from what I've been hearing before, it's going to take us a couple years to get through this. Is the total uh, cost? Is that going to be held at that level, or are, yes. we, going to, are we going to cost over on here about three years from now? No, no, we will be locked into these costs, so we will be fine, just like we were in 2008 with our middle school. Um, I am very, very happy to report that we were um, under budget. Uh, we came in under budget with the new middle school. I do believe that was because of the careful monitoring um, and just the, um, the control from the, all of us making sure that things were done correctly. So I'm very proud of that because I was part of that process. So we made sure there were no, we can't go over budget because I can't go back to the community. I'm a bright woman. I can't go back to the community and say, well, let's say this, uh, my, I have average intelligence. I have a lot of good common sense and a, little, and a lot of good core values. Um, I could never go back to the community and say, whoops, didn't ask for enough. Or we're building these extravagant buildings that are costing more than what we estimated. So now I'd like you guys to get me more money. I mean, I know what you would say to me, which that's what I would say as well. Um, yeah, Tom. The, the things about building all the buildings you want, we've got buying power. So instead of going out buying, let's just say 25 toilets, we're going out and buying 150 toilets. Well, you, you know the rules I did. When you go out buy a lot, you get better breaks on faucets. And I'll show you as you go through, you get better breaks on faucets, put the plumbing and everything. So that would really help us keep our costs lower. So, and if 
did you see that picture of her? That building is the Fremont Battle Space. Yes. Or you need to be back in line here. Yes. In fact, are you even going to be touring over in that section there? We wasn't going to, like, the people over there, so Yeah, we will keep the 2006 edition, obviously. But um, we uh, uh, weren't thinking of touring. And I don't know how much of the gymnasium we're going to be able to show today. Yeah, um, maybe I don't know if anybody knows me, but 
Um, but a lot of you might know my family. Um, my family's been here a long time. I, I had to look it up. I think it's 1853 the Heinleins bought the land that they currently farm on Four Mile House Road. My uh, uncle is farming it now, and my cousin will eventually take it over. Um, there's a cemetery on, uh, in the middle of the field that bears our name now. There used to be a one-room schoolhouse at the end of our lane that bears the name Heinlein uh, out there. Um, my uh, my father attended Washington Elementary. I attended Lutz. My son went to Atkinson. Um, my father, my aunt, two uncles, myself, my brother, my cousin, my wife, my sister-in-law, we all graduated from this school. Um, and we all chose to stay here and send our kids to this school. Um, my aunt taught here. I teach here um, in a couple of years. When she graduates, my niece may be teaching here. Um, and the point is, you know, you people know, we stay. You know, for people from Fremont, we stay here. And that, I think, is kind of important because when we talk about putting these new schools in uh, and building this, we're not just talking about, you know, for our kids or our grandkids. We're talking about our community because these kids that are going to be better prepared by a new school and the technology that will be available to them, they'll probably be reinvesting in this community. You know, they're still going to be here. Um, we, we come back. We tend to do that. Um, and, you know, a lot of, I think, what we need to think about as far as when we want to replace these schools is things that you can't see when you drive by them. You know, I, I taught at the middle school for 14 years. Uh, that was an easy sell. You could drive by and see how old that thing was and how much it needed uh, to be replaced. But a lot of our stuff here is infrastructural. It's, it's things that you can't really see. It's the fact that we can't get all of our kids onto the technology that we need to get them onto at the same time. The state requires us to test our kids on computers, and we can't do that all at once. So testing takes a month. I think in rotation six weeks. There we go, month and a half to rotate these kids through, you know, all the testing cycles so that we can meet those requirements. But even then, you know, as the video said, these kids are, are going to be going into jobs that don't even exist yet, which kind of scares me. But with the proper technology and infrastructure to support that, we can really prepare our kids for whatever is coming. And and I look at these kids and I you know I, I expect them to go out and be the best. And really, when I think about it, they're going to be the best, and they're going to come back here and be our best, too. Um, so we need those things, and simple things like uh, you know, the heating systems, and, and uh, well, there are no air conditioning, and it's just been ridiculously hot at the beginning of the year. It might be cooled down for us. Um, but you open your windows to let the cold air, well, let the cold air in, let the hot air circulate a little bit through your, your thing. And then the bees come in, and they fly around, and the kids all go crazy got to shut off lights to get the bees out, and then if you close the windows, then it gets hot again. Um, we famously had, uh, what was it, a, a, a two years ago, the bathroom collapsed? Yes. Back then, yeah, so we've got some foundational issues. There's a lot that needs to be done. Um, but, you know, even on a, a much bigger level, if we build these new buildings, you know, there's a lot of people who are willing to put back into this community, and this is the foundation. This is where we're starting from, and, and I think it's going to benefit us, you know, in the long run. It's going to benefit our kids and, and, and their kids and so forth. Is that good enough? Okay, thanks. <laughs> what if I said no? Um, <laughs> Students are required to really navigate and to use that computer 
And so in order for them to be successful on that test, it's not just about answering the question, it's about being familiar and comfortable with their technology skills. And we know that many of our children don't have technology at their homes, so the only way that they're going to get those technology skills are becoming familiar and comfortable with them within the classrooms. And again, I don't think we're properly preparing them because I don't have the hardware to provide to them in order to properly prepare them. So when we get the test results this year for our younger students and even our older students, there's two questions that we have to ask. Number one, is it the content they're having problems with? Or number two, do they not know how to navigate using a mouse or a pad? And do they not know how to drag with that mouse? Do they not know how to create graphs with that keyboard? Um, those are the types of skills that our children are having to do at the elementary levels of these state tests. So again, it's not, it's not the education that we received. It's not the education I received. Um, it's just much more challenging for our students today. So I think that uh, Sean brought up a really, really good point about just the state testing in general, too. Uh, websites, websites, I think that what's really critical is that um, please keep an eye on our uh, website, our Fremont uh, Bond Levy website and our Facebook page. I tell everyone it changes daily, and it, I really mean that it changes daily. Um, today, we added uh, some more uh, we were at Lindsay Farmer's Market um, and added some pictures from the farm market, included a new uh, videotape yesterday, so it's constantly changing with information, so I ask you to please take a look at it as well. So, um, I said let's go ahead and do some touring, that's what you're going to see. Okay, and I do expect to see everybody sitting here um, on Monday night. Going to be over at, let's see, Monday I'm at Krogan, and Thursday I'm at Otis, so let me know if you're going to be helping me with my presentations. No? <laughs> or with the tour, is that like? So I thank you for coming on this beautiful fall day. Um, and uh, Don, Scott, and Chris, how do you guys want to buy that? So this is a small group of okay. Thank you. <laughs> so bad that I can't see that far, but I can. Um, and the addition was built in 2006, but this has nothing to do with the addition, but I do want to include that there is addition. Um, the acre site, Donnie, what does that say? The eight sixty-three acre site. Oh, that's true. I'm going there. <laughs> I'm going to start showing you, you, get your attention to the walls where you see a lot of our communication stuff is now running on the walls. I'll point it out again throughout the tour because it gets a lot worse than this. So, and then we'll step into the first bathroom that we come to. When we get further into our, is everybody in here? No. no. When we get further into our tour, you heard him say about the bathroom collapsing. It had urinals just like this. The urinals dropped probably somewhere between five to seven inches into the floor. The floor joists was rotted back. There was nothing, nothing holding them up, so that they just everything started collapsing. And I'll show you that building that has been the bathroom that has been renovated. So this is, you know, what the, the bathrooms are looking like. There's pictures outside of where we just were that shows you what they could look like. So look at the boards while you're there. Okay, we'll continue on here. The doors are off. <laughs> and, and if you have any questions, please ask the questions. No problem. Okay. Yeah.
so you see we start getting into bigger racetracks up here of our communications and everything else. And if you follow Chris, Chris is going to take you to where a lot of the communication wiring and everything is coming in. Don, do you want to come up here and elaborate more on what takes place? And what this is where like all our internet and all that good. Am I right about that? All the internet and everything's coming out of this room, and there's so much more updates that could be advanced in here, but we just don't have the room for it no more. <coughs> the next door that's open up here to your left. That's all our telephone. Am I correct on that? Four eight telephone in this room. In what room? This communication of the telephone lines and all that are coming in. Oh, I believe so. Yes, this is our where our telephone. And you see how that is. This is our main office, and that's that's how we cool our main office with window air conditioning. System principles are down there as well. And as we go along, you'll see again more of our our communication lines and our internet and everything else. It gets bigger and bigger as we go. When you hear Dr. McCauley talk about bandwidth, she's talking about the power in the building. And this was an upgrade here. You'll see these in the hallways. And all these that are new, not I shouldn't say new, they're we're within 10 years, I'll bet, are all maxed out already. We can't get no more. We're done. I mean, when a teacher says, hey, can I have a plug over here? The building can't support it. Because we put it in, if we would put it in and double them up, which you can't do, they just pop the breakers continuously. And then, does anybody want to see another one of our bathrooms? Mm -hmm. So we'll walk into this bathroom. This is, one of, this is our girls' bathroom, which is a little bit more, more friendly than the boys' bathroom. It's got doors, so they got a little privacy. But that's, that's our girls' restroom on this end of the hall. So we'll continue on, and I'll take you down the hallway for the floor. <coughs> I remember it was the first kindergarten I go in that building over there. Oh my God, that stop. I'm like, really? It goes towards me. When you get to start talking to people, it's the first time I was in the up here we're coming to a steel plate and it's in the floor there's a hatch there and it's just the if the floor joists and stuff around it are rotted because when they built this building there was no moisture barriers or anything back in the 50s when they put it so so you know you got a lot of moisture coming up from the ground not only that do you have you have uh, steam leaks and stuff that you know when you find them they get sweat but if you look here we throw a plate over here the hatch is here the hatch is probably the four joists are probably going all the way out to here around this area so we put a plate over it levy passes we don't got to worry about it levy don't pass we're going to have extensive work to do so let's walk into the gym here yeah, this is the part we need to see when we have a booster meeting. To, mo to most people, this looks like a pretty decent gym. I mean, it does look good. The floor looks awesome. 
the custodial staff we here have at the high school does an awesome job of making this look good. But what you don't see is we cannot no longer sand this floor. The floors have been sanded for years. The floor is a 30 year floor. It's already way, way past its due. When the custodians during the summer sand this floor, nails are now starting to pull up. So this floor will have to be tore up. So that's another big cost that will be in the, into the system. But like I said, the general public comes in, they sit in their grandstands and they look, oh, it looks beautiful. Well, they don't see the little things that Chris and Scott have to deal with that, hey, we got a problem, we're pulling up nails, we're grinding nails, we're, we're, we're ruining sanding discs, and stuff like that. Are you done? Yes. Does anybody want to see the pool area while we're right here? Or? The pool we'll area is not going to be replaced, but we'll be more. That's if small anybody wants to we'll see it, we can, we can show them to them, or yep. if you don't mind. Yes. see the rest the rest of the okay. How can they, can Just you can go right out that door. We'll... How can the school be added onto here or not? The school's not going to be added onto here. So this no, this will, will all be demolished. Okay. Then we'll start. The school will stay in session. Right. The well, new building will be built. Well, then the new gym will be over there. Yes. Yeah. This would be gone. This this so whole building would be gone. Off and put this into a parking lot then. Yes. Yes. Oh, as okay. far as I know, I haven't seen the plans myself. If you want to ask Dr. McCarty, she would more than happy to answer that for you. The, I mean, I'm just because I'm in a booster. That's where I'm trying to decide. If yeah. The, how no, I'll, sh I'll show you right here around the corner where this is going to start. See this wall out here? Yeah. Through the window. Right. That's where the, everything from this wall here this, this way wall. will be gone. Oh, okay. This will stay. Okay. So they're just like. Close the door off. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the wrestling room? Yeah, we go upstairs for our meeting with freshman classes. There's a wrestling room. Yeah. I can see it when we come with the pool. Oh, okay. After our meeting. Good. And whoever wants to see the pool. I know this wasn't on our tour. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'd much rather. Come in, sir. Thing. 
Yeah. 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 The next thing I'm going to show you is outside these doors, and we found this strictly by accident. You'll see the new concrete right outside the doors here. There was a hole. So we had Selling Brothers come in and, you know, we, hey, we need some sidewalk replaced. It's damaged. They started doing it, and it collapsed. Right here is what it looks like. Nobody knew that the floor joists is continued on the outside of the building and the, the, all that collapsed outside. This is the floor joists. The floor joists were hanging just like this. Nothing to support them. So they had to scab onto the floor joists and to make them secure. But this is the pictures of what it was because we didn't even know that that was under there. And you can see in one of these pictures here, Right here, there's a line running out, so we don't really know where that goes either, so. <laughs> well, the heating system's in the bus garage, right? Yeah, well, we're going to go over there, too. You can look at the pictures here of how they did it. They, they started. You can see how the floor joists were just, just <coughs> gone. Yeah. What are the... Or just, they're wood? No, no, they're steel, steel, but they're just rotted. I mean, okay. again, back to the moisture coming up from the ground, any kind of steam leaks that we have, it just deteriorates that so much. You could go down when it was 100 degrees outside this year, you could go down there and that, that the crawl space was wet. And I would love to be able to put knee pads on some people and just take them down there because I know they'd like to see it. How much room is under, under those floor joists? I mean, are there, is there, you can crawlable. Like, we can crawl. Like about three, 12, 12 yeah, inches. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if you go down like toward the band area, it starts to go down. So it's actually your area gets stood where you're actually crawling on your belly and rubbing on your back. In our band wing area, these lines and stuff like this, are buried in the ground. Mm -hmm. Steam lines, they go bad. You look, you see the ground, and you'll see steam coming out of the ground. <coughs> Two of our maintenance men have to climb in there, dig and dig and dig to find that line. Oh. Call Walters up, they come in, cut the section of pipe out, and weld in the new one. Which I got a piece of that up here to show you guys. Oh, I have it. Yeah. Yeah. Straight ahead, that door's open. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We hired somebody for that. Yeah, Walters. <laughs> <laughs> Still have the old fashioned lockers, little baskets. <laughs> not, not in the hallways. No, I mean, they have the girls' lockers. I don't know if we do have uh, baskets. Do we still got baskets for our lockers in the girls' locker room? Baskets? Yeah, is it in lockers now? Lockers. They're lockers. Oh, well, they yeah. Have So, you know, and it's, it's, it's just yeah. rough. Yeah. With everything new, the new kind of equipment coming out, you got to have some storage, which the new building will have storage. So let's go up here into this lab. Yes. Again, this is our bandwidth maxed out. No more to go. Oh, my God. What's hurt in this building? Absolutely. Biology class, I think it was. Yeah, it's, I think it's one of the. Is this one of the biology rooms? It was. I okay. It still is, but it was in my day. Everything in here does does for the most part work. They are outdated, and right. I'll show you the other biology room. This one needs to be redone. You're looking probably when we did the other one. You're looking at a cost of somewhere between thirty-five hundred to four thousand dollars to put everything new. And we'll go over there. When I say new, I'm talking your faucets right. and this. And that's where, where the question you would ask, our buying power would be tremendous because you'd buy all your faucets and everything, and doors, one. windows, everything. It's so, by, by bulk, it is cheaper. Yes, can we cut through there? But oh, we'll just cut right through here. Now this room is the one that we took and put the new faucets in because what happens, is these will start to leak right. and it's gas. Oh, I, I know. 
this must have been Mr. Now these ones? Really? Yeah. Well, now they got desks. Yeah, I was so. going to say, that got switched. So they were, the desk was all in a U shape. Oh, what? This sheet? Is that by Oh, yeah. They had U shaped desk. Could be This year we replaced all the gas valves, the faucets, and everything. And when you replace this stuff, it's it's a chain reaction. I, you take this off. Oh, there goes the line underneath of it. So then you're just constantly following it, following it until you get to something good. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, we're looking at a cost to, to replace all this was like thirty five to four thousand dollars, and that still needs to be done to that room. Mm -hmm. And then we had a moisture problem up here, where it was coming from under here. And we, we noticed that this desk and this table here was starting to blow out and everything. And it's like, what's going on? So we crawl underneath, and I'll show you the pipe that we found out here in the hallway. Ooh. Well, you Start getting ahead, you think you're ahead. And it's really shocked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. In, this, in this hallway is the is all our piping and stuff, and you'll see it right here in the picture. I actually took a picture of it before it was removed. This is one of our return lines for the steam system for the for the boilers. <laughs> And you'll see the holes that are in this. Yeah. Now, we got to hire welders because they got to come out and they cut it and they cut it back far enough to find enough to weld to. And they had to just cut this section out. This actually just happened within the last two weeks of them removing this section. We found it in the winter, but you can't shut it down in the winter because we need the heat here. And if you look in the, if you look in the pictures here, this is that pipe. And you see the stream of water here and you see the stream of water here where that just leaked and leaked and leaked and leaked and created a lake down there. That is throughout the school. It is all over the school and it's only time until we have that again somewhere else. And it costs a fortune to replace it. Yeah. You're exactly right. I mean, at some point, that yeah. you just got to say, yep. okay, it's okay, all enough's enough. Right. right. So let's walk down here. Again, now, now you see the communication lines on the outside, nothing cover them. You take, you take a six-foot kid, he jumps up there, gets mad, and tears that down. Were you a, a, a thunder? Right? In relation to these, now what what can we build it with now so this won't happen to a new school in 40 or 50 years? The, on the, the new schools are on slabs. They're not. There's no crawl space. Okay. Everything's above. So everything would be above. Would you then? You know, you don't have to worry about the moisture oh, the, as much. The pipes would be up in yes. the ceiling. Yes. Yes. Oh. Most of it runs inside the ceilings, and we've had a few little issues over at the the. Uh, middle school with our fire system where lines have had you know gotten holes and stuff in them already yeah and you go up there and you just you know you know all of us know that a lot of our steel work comes from china and you get these pipes and stuff we put in there and they got a hole yeah but it's easy to replace it you know exactly to under the yeah, exactly to do it. and you know you know right away hey i've got a leak because there's this puddle on the floor and you're on it where this you might not catch that for six months. And you gotta figure out where it's coming And then you from. gotta figure out, hey, I've got steam coming. You gotta break got steam stuff coming. apart to get then to Then you go looking. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. over there, it, it's a whole different, everything's above, everything's covered, covered, covered. you can check to see what's leaking, oh. what's not leaking. Right, you know what it is. <laughs> it's right there, pretty easy to get to. This is the upgrade of the thing. Now, all this new equipment, that has been put into this will go in the district. It don't get thrown out. People say, oh, they, they, they put all this new stuff in there. They can't put new, oh, new stuff into a new school. Yes, they can. This will all be used throughout the district. Everything will be used. 
And again, another cutting cost because, hey, we've got one of those, let's put that instead and buy a new one. So let's walk over to the boiler room. We're going to cut through here. Yeah, this looks totally different. This is right where the wall used to be, it's right here. Yeah. Okay. They added this all in. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. When they came in, when they came in to do this, uh, Warner's was in here on it and there's somebody else. State came in and said, oh that looks great, that looks great but we can't pass it because of the stuff on the back wall, the old stuff, you need to replace all that at the same time. Now, the old stuff was there, but they said, no, you need to replace that. So if they would, you know, if they're saying we needed to replace that, we need to replace the rest of it. So, we'll go from there. All right, let's just walk around here and we'll go out to the boiler room. This is a new grill, so they have actually hamburgers. Yeah, I mean these kids got to eat nice soups every day. I'll tell you what, very, very good food. Very, very good food out of Yeah, that's what Mrs. Bateman said. <laughs> well, everybody come in here for lunch. We still got some sitting up there. You want to get them? Yeah, they're yeah. they're with Chris. Oh, okay. Yeah. There it goes. Power down. That parking lot's coming up. and we don't do nothing with them because there is asbestos on them. So that's why they do set and you'll see them in the elementary schools and stuff like that. If you get a chance when they have the Hayes open house, go to Hayes because we're just now doing some work on that boiler there to get them ready for winter. So this one here does work. This is one of the backups that we have for the high school. And you can see its age. I mean, it's one of the originals from when the school was built. This one here, there used to be one of them here, but it was replaced by this newer one. This was bought brand new for the school, and it has already been, it was condemned. And the boiler inspector came in and said, you can't use it. The, the, the powers to be had a talk with them and they got together. And they said, well, we got, can we repair it for five years with the levy coming on? Can we repair it and use it? This boiler will have to come out regardless within the next five years. And we're looking at, you're probably looking at a price tag of eighty dollars to $120,000 for a boiler. What had happened is it rotted out. You'll see the new metal and stuff. They replaced the metal. The metal was like that thick. 
It's not a big pressurized boiler. The metal is like that thick that was rotted out. It should be that thick. So what they did is they came in, tore the boiler down, cut out sections of the boiler, like the pipe I showed you, cut out, and they welded new sections in it. Boiler inspector came back, liked everything he saw. Now we can use it again. But again, keeping your back of your head, it will have to be replaced. And the only reason they let us do that fix is because it's not in the building that we have kids in. Also. Oh. If know? this would have been in the building, absolutely not. It would have been jerked out. And, but so like I said, that one still, this yeah. one still does work. So if this one would go down, Scott, Chris could come in and fire this one. Absolutely. Or if it gets really, really cold, you need them both? Yeah, if you needed them both, yes, you could use them both. Usually just one will maintain one the One will building. maintain the building. Okay. But if they build a new building, all this would be taken out. And you know, you've seen the storage area, the problem we got, this would probably turn into storage area. Oh. So now, th this building will stay? Yes, this building will stay. So where's the new boilers going to go? They'll probably be in the school like the middle school. They're not going to be this big. They're going to be. Well, I wish we should have some pictures yeah. of those. This yeah. big. Just little ones. There's three little Just ones. Just imagine your washer and dryer sitting together about that size. Oh, okay. And that is. Like those. Uh, What's the Renai water here? Yep, yep. Something just like it, just, just like, like that. Yeah, and the middle school has three lined up, and it's amazing. I, you know, I worked over there for four years. Only two ever ran. Even as cold as it got, only two boilers ever ran. You know, the third one was on standby. Then they would just alternate them all. Them. Yep, it, it, and the computer all did that. You know, it's all computerized, yeah. but yeah. So if one goes down, you're not in a problem. No, no, no. I mean, you can fix it. And, yep, yeah. absolutely. You isolate it. Yeah, that's all fish. Well, this is just like a scene here. That is how hot water. So it's so hot. Water. Same water. Same water. Okay. 54 to 7 instead of 45 to no. <laughs> We got 7. <laughs> Let's head back into the broth. Who's your, your door shut? This one's unlocked here if we were to go back through the kitchen. Okay, we'll just go through the kitchen then. Yeah. Yeah. Take him through the kitchen when you show him the bathroom. That's why we did that. Thank you. No, this one, this one. No, it's not unlocked. I have a key for you to show. This, when when uh, when the girls in the kitchen need to do their laundry, such as their towels, their rags, and all that, this is what they got to do. They got to come out here and go in this room because there's a washer and dryer in this room. Got, New schools building, don't have that. Building key, the main lock key. Oh, I can't wait to come back to this school. <laughs> yeah, the, got to go to Vanguard. Yeah. That is actually back in the day I had yeah. Yeah. Like tin on the window. Yep. That's what I thought it was. Yep. Oh, you don't need to go that's in there. Right. That's, that's alright. Right. They're kids. Yep. They're yep, and that, that's all from the windows. If you guys look over there, you can yes. see in the windows. You can look over there, that's all the windows. That are. It's in the window itself. It's in, yes, yeah, between the panes. It's a film in between the panes. And when you got them, you didn't know that that was going to happen. No, no, they that didn't. That was supposed you know. to last forever. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> That's no, true. I mean, you can imagine when it's cold out, though. Lunch, you know, the lunch, man, yeah, they eat it. Yeah, that's not fun. Here. Yeah, that's fun. Got to put your winter coat on. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to put your winter coats, and these guys got to make sure that this is always cleaned off yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, they should make like that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can use me. I'm going to be in the chair for me. I get the city and the county. I feel like I'm in a battle zone. Other troopers. Refrigerators, freezers, and everything.
will be divided up amongst the district. It doesn't like you. And I had a gentleman say, "Well, they, you can't, you can't put used equipment in a new building." Yes, you can. Yeah. That's, that's not. That's not. I a we found that out. That we're we're using. Using. Yeah. That's some of it. We won't take yeah. over with all the yeah. new stuff. All right. We just put new stuff in new. I can't answer that. Do you guys know how long these lockers have been here? As long as the school's been. Uh, oh, really? these new ones? Because yeah. we had our own combination ones. Then I see they got built in. Okay, I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you into the bathroom. That the the floor and stuff that didn't collapse, and I'll show you how it's been repaired. This was main door in the washroom. Bathroom floor fell. Yeah, this this had to get replaced. Uh, why? Yeah. Nothing like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right where you're standing, you'll see the trazzle. How the trazzle is different. They had to take out from here all the way across into the girls' restroom. The floor joists were gone. This is when I told you about the urinals that were here. These are this is the floor that was collapsing, and the urinals were down and everything. They had to bust all this up, take this whole wall off, take part of that wall off. It was all opened up, <laughs> and all new plumbing, everything, new toilets. Uh, I do believe these were new, so they replaced everything in the bathroom. But if this is collapsed. There's probably other areas that are, aren't far behind. So let's move like on. I said this was farmland when I was. Yeah. Go old, great school. My cousin was the first one to make me remember. She's in 1948. I don't think she should be giving the tour. No, because she doesn't. She's never even seen the building. Huh? She's never even seen the building. Never even seen the building. Okay, now we're just going to head back to the little theater. Here's these windows again. If you look here, oh my God. Yeah. windows. Oh, it's not, you know, on the outside or on the inside. We wash them, we clean them, but yeah, they're still ugly. Yeah, right. <laughs> this so what about this one? That, that, that you're looking at out there, that's part of the, the farm, you know, the, the gardens and stuff that we do in the school system. Oh. Some cracks or... Huh? I think that's why they go to Vanguard and my stepbrother wants there. To be that's probably why they, yeah. Yeah, the greenhouse and all that. Yeah. They must have painted deep. Our and as you get down here again, you still see yeah. all our communication lines. Yeah, the, the, the gentleman that's operating the computer, he's one of our techies. He's the one that comes in and hooks up the ends of those and takes care of all that for us. That and he does a very fine, fine job. job. You can see structural cracks and yeah. stuff in the wall. This is our home method. Yeah, it still is. It still is a home method. Now you haven't heard anybody painting home method. I don't know if they call it home mech now. Apparently, What's it called? Nutrition. Yeah. That, I don't even think they sew anymore. No, you have to go to Vanguard. Yeah. Which I think is kind of. So, and if you have any other questions. This is the band. Yep, that's the band. That's the band wing. What are we starting to 
start going downhill. Remember when I told you the crawl space that yeah. goes down? This is what I was talking about. When me yeah, and there's that in the gym too, because that was all the level we yeah, went. When before. me and Judge, our one of our retired maintenance guys, come down through here, we were cruising down through underneath the floor, and you get under there and you start to see it yeah. start to drop. And before long, you're on your belly. You know, so if you're claustrophobic, not the place to be. Now that used to be our art room. I don't know what they're down in the other wing now. Oh, is down it? The way oh, okay. Okay, we'll go down here, and if anybody wants a cookie or something to drink. So. Uh, Gracie has some lady going for her. Yeah. She she does a really good job. She has plenty of them. Well, it was informative yeah. to you, so, and if you do have any questions, don't be afraid to make phone calls to the school system because we'll answer the questions.